scientists, welcome back. This is lesson seven of Earth's Changing Climate Unit. This is a lesson for sixth grade scientists, and today's lesson is titled Investigating Human Activities and the Atmosphere. So we'll be looking today at how behaviors or activities from humans affect the atmosphere of our planet. To do our lesson today, you'll need a couple of things, someone to talk to about some of your ideas, something to write down your ideas on, as well as Earth Changing Climate Sim. So let's get started by reviewing what we ended lesson six with. So at the end of lesson six, we had this new key concept that we were really excited about, and we had discovered that carbon dioxide and methane actually stop energy from leaving Earth's system by redirecting energy that would have exited the system. And we looked at the sim and we explored it a lot and we actually clicked on a little energy arrow and discovered that oftentimes in the atmosphere, molecules of carbon dioxide and methane interact with the energy that's trying to exit our system and they redirect it. Sometimes it's redirected back to Earth's surface where it gets reabsorbed and increases the amount of energy absorbed by Earth's surface. But today, what we're trying to understand is why? Why is carbon dioxide and methane increasing in the atmosphere? What's happening? And we're going to be looking today specifically at something called human activities. And you might think, I think I know what human activities mean, but the definition that we're using for this lesson is human activities are things that people do that affect the Earth system. We're going to be investigating ways to stop the increase of carbon dioxide and methane in lessons 8, 9, 10. But in this one specifically, we're going to be looking at what are these activities and why do they increase carbon dioxide and methane. So to do this, there's a setting on the Earth's Changing Climate Sim. It's called the Human Activities Mode. And you can click on that and see all kinds of things. Like if you look at this, you'll notice that the surface of the Earth is no longer just glaciers and continents and ocean. There's little tiny people and cars. Something looks like a little green funnel. We'll have to explore what that is. And if you look over here on the image, it has a key that says what all of these are. So you might want to pause this video and have this picture available as you're exploring the sim to see what each of those icons are but the little humans represent the population and if you look at them you can actually see there's one two three four five six seven and each one of those human figures represents one billion um, people on our our planet and so if you look here you can see population and right now it's set to seven billion which is about what our planet is right now but you can increase it or decrease it there's a little car, and th that represents the amount of combustion per person. There's also livestock per person, so you'll see little cows. And there's something called forest cover and gas capture, and we'll be learning more about those in later lessons. So let's, e let's explore the graph part of this. At the very bottom, when you click on the graph mode, you can see uh, a graph that shows you a little bit about the temperature and parts per million of carbon dioxide or methane, depending on what you select. There's a place here for temperature, surface ice, absorbed energy, carbon dioxide, and methane. So there's lots of information there. And we're gonna have some interesting exploration activities today. So let's take a look at it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at um, two different things. One, carbon dioxide, and the second one is methane. So I'll give you directions for both of those and then we'll go explore the sim. So the carbon dioxide investigation, the two things that affect carbon dioxide in the sim are the population of humans and combustion per person. So we're going to uh, to investigate these two things and we'll have three different settings. The first one is we won't make any changes to the population and then we'll decrease population to the lowest setting and see how that affects it and then we'll increase it to the highest setting and see how that affects the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and then we'll do the same with combustion. No change, decrease, and then increase. So we'll do it the same way for both the population and the combustion testing. And so these are the directions. After you go to the Earth's Changing Climate Sim and select Human Activities Mode, then at the very bottom, click on the graph 
by pressing the graph icon and then make sure you select carbon dioxide. And once you have that, the first thing you do is just let the sim run until it reaches um, 30 on the timer and then pause and record your observations. So this is where there's no change at all to the population. And then change the population down to the very lowest setting and hit play and run it for 30 more seconds and then hit pause and record what you notice happen on on the graph what happens to the temperature and the ice and all of the carbon dioxide specifically that's what we're really looking at and then increase the population to the highest setting and run it until the timer reaches 90. and so record those observations and then we're going to um, reset it still in the graph and still with carbon dioxide but we want to this time we're going to just look at the combustion so this the first one run it with no change to the combustion and then um, after 30 seconds move it down to the lowest setting for combustion and then run it for 30 more seconds and then pause at 60 and then change it to the highest setting and run it until it reaches 90. and so when you're running the combustion test you're leaving the population just as it is so that would be the population like it is right now on our planet but changing how much combustion per person and so after you're done with that then we're interested in looking at methane because because we know that's the other gas that also affects how energy exits and enters earth's system but this time we're going to be looking at population for methane just like we did for carbon dioxide but instead of combustion we'll be looking at livestock per person so we'll do it the exact same way. We'll do no change, let it run for 30, and then um, decrease to the lowest setting and run it to 60 and then pause and then increase it to the, to the very highest setting and let it run to 60. And we'll do the exact same thing for livestock. So this is so many directions and they're kind of complicated. So I created this data table that I think is going to really help you figure out how to keep track of all of these directions. And so what you'll see here is the first column has the three different variables, population, combustion, and livestock per person. And then the next two columns have carbon dioxide and methane because we want to keep track of what's happening with the population in both both carbon dioxide and methane so the directions say the first time no change then decrease and then increase and we'll do it with carbon dioxide and population carbon dioxide and combustion and then we'll do it for methane and population and methane and livestock and so once we're done collecting all this data we'll have a better idea of how human activities affect these gases in earth's atmosphere so some of you already know how to get onto the sim, but I'm going to review the directions one more time for those of you joining us that haven't done this before. So to get on the sim, go to seattleschools.org and then get onto your Clever account. And you can do that by clicking here on this little Clever drop down menu or by going to the student family portal and getting into your account that way. And then once you're there, you're going to click on Earth's Changing Climate Sim. So go to the global navigation menu in the top left corner, scroll down until you get to Science Apps, and then go to Earth's Changing Climate. So go off and explore and fill in a table that looks like this. Almost there, there we go. And collect all your data for these different variables and then come back after you've done that and we'll talk about what we explored and what we found. Okay, see you soon. Okay, this is the Earth Changing Climate Sim and I just moved my picture a little bit out of the way so you can see. And you'll remember from the directions that we want to use the graph in this part of the sim so we're on the human activities part and we want to use the graph so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to explore carbon dioxide so i'm going to hit play i'm going to move that up to four times and we're going to see what is the effect of carbon dioxide and how it's connected to population so i paused it at 30 and as i saw just with our normal population with humans doing their human activities that the temperature on on Earth's system increased and that's kind of a weird way to say that but the temperature increased and let's see uh, if the temperature increases what do you think is happening to the amount of energy absorbed so I can click here 
and I can see that, but you probably already knew that if the temperature is increased, the reason it's, it's happening is because the amount of energy is being absorbed by Earth's surface, and that makes the temperature go up. And we know that if the temperature is increasing, that the amount of surface ice is going to decrease. And we can see that when we click here, that it started off, you know, just at about 50% of the Earth's surface, 40 to 50. But then once the population of people started doing human activities, that the, the ice started to melt. And this is similar to what we're seeing happening right now on our planet. Human activities have been increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Okay, so now what we're going to do is what would happen if we just decrease Earth's um, population from 7 billion down to 1 billion. And I'll hit play. And we'll let this run until about 60 seconds. And we'll see what happens. So it looks like temperature is staying, oh, you know, it's kind of staying similar the same, but it's kind of dropping down. Let's just look at one thing at a time. So carbon dioxide is the gray line and the black line is the temperature. And so when we started, the temperature was higher and it's dropped down about two degrees Celsius. And the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere went from about 380 parts per million and it's dropped down now to 300 parts per million. Okay, so what happens now if I increase the population all the way up to 12 billion? And if you already explored this, then you're going to already know. But let's just look at this um, just to see together if you had the same findings. And so, oh yeah, you can see that it's really, oh, it reached its maximum carbon dioxide. So let's see what happens now. So I'm going to pause that. I think that's about, oh, well, 90 seconds was back here. So I let it run a little longer. Huh. So the more people there are on our planet, then the more carbon dioxide. But I, that should also be noted that it's more people doing these human activities. I don't think we should get rid of all the people on our planet. Like we have 7 billion right now. And I'm not saying that we should get rid of 6 billion people. I don't think that's true at all. But it's more just a matter of if all the people continue to do the human activities, that's going to continue to increase the carbon dioxide, which seems to have an effect on the amount of energy absorbed by Earth's surface and the temperature. And then also the ice has, um, according to the sim, it's dropped down to about 10% or 0% covering the surface. So this is some interesting stuff that we've figured out using the sim. There definitely seems to be a connection with the population and carbon dioxide. So on this table that we were looking at before, you could jot down some ideas here when you increase or decrease the population. What does that do to the carbon dioxide level? And so let's quickly collect data for these other parts and see if we see other trends that are similar to this or things that are different. So um, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly since some of you already explored it and we'll see the results um, together. Okay, so let's reset this, and this time we are going to be in the graph, just like last time, up to four, and we're interested this time specifically on combustion, like what exactly is happening to the temperature based on combustion. Okay, I paused a little too soon. So now what I'm going to do is decrease it down to none, so that's the population staying totally sa the same but the combustion per person is actually dropping down and I'm going to hit pause again. And then I'm going to move combustion all the way to high and hit play and I'll stop it at about 90 seconds. Okay. So yeah, I'm, this is interesting for the first 30 seconds when we just had regular human activity, uh, the temperature was increasing. Let me put carbon dioxide so you can see that the carbon dioxide was increasing. And then once we change the amount of combustion per person down to, to zero, then things leveled out and um, the temperature didn't keep rising. What's interesting though is it also didn't drop down. Um, it seems like the carbon dioxide changed a little, but we saw this in the last time too. It, it didn't go down by very much. Like it just kind of seemed to plateau. I mean, it drops a little but not, um, not significantly like you see when you move the population up at um, from 60 to 90, that the amount of carbon dioxide, it keeps rising. And so we can see here that by decreasing the combustion, the carbon dioxide doesn't really seem to leave the atmosphere very quickly. 
I wonder how long you'd have to run it for the carbon dioxide levels to drop down to 200 parts per million. So even though the more combustion isn't happening, the stuff that was already in the atmosphere continues to be there, continues to redirect energy that wanted to leave Earth's system. So if we wanted to decrease the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, hmm, we'll have to figure out a way to do that. So in the next couple of units, sorry, in the next couple of lessons, let's take a look at how we can change the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere that's already been there and see what kinds of things maybe we could do. Okay, so let's switch gears and now we're going to take a look at methane in this column and we'll look at population again and then we're going to look at livestock per person. All right, so I'm going to reset it and move it to the graph, hit play, and I'm going to speed it up to four. And this time we're specifically interested in methane, which is this turquoise, turquoise line. And we're going to let it run for about 30. I'll pause it. It's a little bit past there. That's fine. And this time I'm going to decrease the population down, hit play, let it run till um, maybe 64 this time since I went to 34 last time. And then we're going to take the population and move it all the way up to 12 billion. And we can see, you know, it's a similar trend to what we saw with carbon dioxide. It's a little different, but we can see that's happening there. I let it run a little longer so we could see this line. But we can see that at the beginning, um, with our population just doing normal human activities, that the methane level was increasing. And then once we decrease the population down to zero, the methane level in the atmosphere did start to drop down to about 240 parts per million, but it didn't get back down to 200 parts per million. So I wonder how we could lower that down. And then once we increase the population to 12 billion, it just spiked up to 540 parts per million. And we can see that all the surface ice is gone. The absorbed energy is just really high. And we can see that the temperature has also spiked to 27.6 degrees Celsius, which is so warm that that's like the Eocene period in Earth's past when even the Arctic was a swampy warm area for warm water animals, which didn't work very well for our polar bears or our penguins down in the South Pole. Okay, so the next part what we want, what we want to do is we want to look at livestock per person and we want to see how that affects um, the amount of methane in Earth's atmosphere. So let's reset it. And this time we'll leave the population at 7 billion the whole time and then just change one of the human activities and see what methane is going to be affected by that. So I'm in hit play. I'll move it up to 4. And we're looking at methane again. And we're interested in the temperature and the surface size. So I can see that it's starting to drop just like we saw last time, but this time we're going to change one human activity, which is livestock per person. And we'll see if that has any effect on the amount of methane gas in the atmosphere. So the first thing I'll do is I'll move it down to none. And you might think like, what are humans using livestock for? So for meat from cows and sheep and um, for, oh, we reached the max, forgot to hit pause. And then also uh, livestock is raised for wool or leather, different things like that. So there's lots of things that humans use livestock for. So it looks like when the livestock per person was de decreased, like look what happened to the methane level. So what we've just discovered from this is that clearly there's a connection between livestock and the amount of methane in the atmosphere. We know that methane is one of those those gases that can redirect energy that's on its way out of Earth's system. So we'll need to explore a little bit more to find out what methane is, how it's connected to livestock. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do with this one is we want to move the methane um, producing livestock, there's some connection there, up to high. And um, I think we need to prepare ourselves that the ice might have to go away. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, it's dropped down to 0% and the temperature is rising. The level of methane is rising. The temperature is getting up to, oh, that's so warm, 25 degrees Celsius on average, which means some places are going to be really hot. 
Okay, so um, I think what we need to do next is let's learn a little bit more about combustion and methane to understand this. And so let's go back to here. And in the next little part, I want us to understand a little bit about combustion. And so I'm going to show you a little video. And in that video, um, you'll be introduced to what combustion is. And we'll have a better understanding about why the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is increasing when combustion increases. We know that carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere is causing climate change because it redirects energy back to Earth's surface, making it warmer. But where exactly is all this carbon dioxide coming from? One of the main ways carbon dioxide is added to the atmosphere is through a process called combustion. Combustion means burning. One important way combustion happens is when people burn fossil fuels, like gasoline, coal, or natural gas, for energy. When these fuels get burned, they do not go away. They change into something else. Through combustion, some of the matter from the fuel becomes carbon dioxide, and is released into the atmosphere. Many of our everyday activities rely on combustion. For example, did you know that when we turn on a light switch or a computer, we are using electrical energy from power plants? Well, most power plants generate electrical energy by burning fossil fuels, and that releases carbon dioxide into the air. We also burn fossil fuels in transportation. When we fly in a plane or ride in a car, these vehicles are powered by combustion. Inside their engines, fossil fuels are burned to make these vehicles move. It might seem like the heat from the engine causes climate change, but that small amount of heat is not enough to make a difference. The thing that really affects climate is the carbon dioxide being released by combustion. When we understand how combustion and climate change are linked, it's easier for each of us to do our small part by using less energy. If everyone helps, then we can reduce our impacts on the climate. So from that video, we learned a new vocab word, which is combustion. And combustion is the process of burning fuels that produces heat and for many fuels, carbon dioxide. So now we can see why human activities on our planet seems to increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the sim. But what about methane? We definitely got some clues that methane increased as the amount of livestock increased on our, on our planet in the sim, but why? So in this picture, you can see something that is really kind of, you know, a little bit weird, but we're talking about farts. The farts from cows and sheep is what increases the amount of methane in our atmosphere. There are other ways that methane increases, but this is the most significant. And so the more sheep and cows that humans are raising for meat and milk and wool and leather, that's having an impact on our planet. So when we eat a bowl of ice cream, the milk in it is produced by cows that are just eating grass and farting away and making methane in our atmosphere. And so we have to think about how much livestock we think should be on our planet and how much combustion we think. And so in the next part of our, of our unit, in lesson eight and nine, we're going to look more closely at um, the levels of carbon dioxide and methane, how they've been increasing in recent history on our planet. And then we're going to explore some ideas of how to decrease that. We saw in the sim that after the population dropped down again, the carbon dioxide, methane, the carbon dioxide and methane levels remained pretty similar. And so how can we get some of that back? And so we're going to come up with some solutions and we can propose those to, um, to Irene Lee in a blog post for us to be able to share that with our community, to let other people understand more about what climate change is, what's causing it, how energy is not able to leave the system because of these gases we've put in the atmosphere, and then how we can try removing some of those gases. So we'll come up with some positive solutions in our next lesson. Okay, see you then. Bye.